حبيبي قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الأئمة المعصومين المنتجبين ولا سيما حجة الله في الأراضين روحي وأرواح المؤمنين لتراب مقدمه الفداء One of the best foundations that Allah has established in the religion of Islam is the foundation of marriage as we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam where he says ma buniya bina'un fil islam ahabbu ila allahi min al-tazweej no foundation was built in the religion of islam in the eyes of allah better than marriage now why there is so much emphasis on marriage itself through the quran through the narrations of ahl al-bayt alayhim as-salam it is for many factors few of them which are the most vital ones number one we have in the narrations from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi man tazawwaja faqad akmala nisfadina whoever gets married they fulfill half of their religion and the other half let them uh, do taqwa to fulfill the other half so the emphasis on this where do we find it in the quran and why is it there so much so that marriage which is a highly recommended act is a mustahab now in our day and age we have from the Ahlul Bayt Alayhi narrations, if someone fears haram, then marriage becomes wajib on them. It is a highly recommended act, especially in the West now or in the time that we're living now, to count marriage out of your life or not to get married is not really an option. It's not a feasible option. So when we look into the Quran, what does Quran have to say about this? Even people who do not even fall in sinning, Quran speaks how they lived. For example, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَ لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرْعِيًّا Allah says to the Prophet that we have sent prophets before you. This is the ayah. But why then Allah joins this with it? He says, وَجَعَلْنَ لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرْعِيًّا And we made spouses for them and a lineage and a generation. Okay, this, how, what's this got to do with the Rasul? It is part of their life that these prophets got married and they established a family. Az-zawaju min sunnati wa man raghaba an sunnati farisa minni. Rasulullah says, az-zawaj, marriage or getting married is from my sunnah. Whoever does not follow my sunnah is not from me. Now when Allah mentions the prophets before you, they got married, they had families. When we look into the lives of this Prophet, for example, Ibrahim السلام, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the best of the Prophets, we find that these two Prophets, Allah says about them, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَنَ There was a good example for you in Ibrahim and in those who were with Ibrahim. So the Uswa Hasana, the role model, doesn't just limit to taqwa and salah and song. If Ibrahim السلام, got married, so will I, if he had family, so will I establish a family too. And then the other Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, our Prophet, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا There was a good example for you in the Prophet to follow. So what they did, we as well should do. Now this is when it comes to the Prophets. In the Quran, Allah speaks of the Ahlul Bayt Alaihi Wasallam. Ahlul Bayt too. They asked Allah for family, but not any family. What do they ask for? In Surah Al-Furqan, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرْبِيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ O Allah, give us from our wives and our family that which is good for the eye, something that you are happy with. Qurrata ayunan, the apple of our eye basically, that will make our life smooth. Wajalna lil muttaqina imama, and make us the leaders of the muttaqin. 
Now this ayah applies to the Al-Bayt salam specifically Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now if we look at the azwad that Imam Ali alayhi salam had, yes, Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, uh, Sayyidah Umm al-Baneen alayhi salam, and the children, he had Hassan, Hussein, Zainab, Umm Kulthum, Abbas, and the brothers of Abbas, and so on and so forth. So it is part of the people of Allah, the Anbiya, the Awliya, that they establish a family and an example family, an example family. If you see Islam, it has spread on who? By who? The 14 Anbiya, Islam. But they, when you look into their family, they had stable foundations. Now, this is what Allah says as an example. Now, let's bring it to our lives. Realistically, when I or someone else chooses to get married, number one worry they have, financial. Okay, financially, can I really afford a house? Can I really afford a car? Can I really afford a wife? Can I really afford to raise kids? Especially in today's age, when we look into the Quran, what does Allah say about Worrying about finances when it comes to marriage. Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ankihu al-ayama minkum wa salihina min ibadikum wa imaikum, iya kunu fuqara yuqnihum Allahu min fadli. Allah says, and marry the single from among you as well as such of your male and female. If they are poor, then Allah will make them rich. This is what the Quran says. Now people can come back and tell me, for example, Muhammad, you asked when I got married, if anything, it made me even poorer. I could not manage financially. Then it is not the Islamic issue. It's not something an issue with the Quran. For example, someone comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and he tells Rasulullah, I am poor. Rasulullah tells him, get married. Imagine someone comes to you now and says to you, I'm broke, and you tell him, get married. He's going to laugh at you, you know. What do you mean? I already can't afford my own life. You want me to afford a wife and kids? Rasulullah tells him, get married. After a while, when this man got married, he came back and he says to the Prophet, I am stable financially. Now, when we speak of finances, let's speak of how we manage finances. Let's be quite open about this. Now, the normal marriage or a wedding, if I was to speak from my generation, friends who got married five years ago, four years ago, so quite recent, people, when it comes to marriage, they spend that which Islam leaves it as a mubah. It's optional. You want to spend 20, 30k on a wedding? It's up to you. You want to spend 5k, 2k on a wedding? It's up to you. But then you cannot come back and say, I got married, I fell financial, because you did not manage well. It's nothing to do with the Quran. Allah says, get married, I will take care of things. But if I do things, for example, a wedding which will cost me 30k, and then cars, I will hire them for another 5k, then a holiday for 5k. By the time I come back from the honeymoon, the marriage, I'm 40k, 50k in debt. I have taken loans out, credit cards out. The stress of paying them back, yes, that will hunt me for at least five years to seven years. Not to mention in those five years, if I have kids, I have to take care of them, I have to pay a mortgage or a rent. All this, Allah tells you, sit down with yourself. Manage yourself, don't go over. And again, when we do these things, is it really we're doing it from Islamic sunnah? Let's be honest, Imam Ali, Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, when he married the best of women, what did he give in dowry? He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, I have a sword and a uh, a shield. Rasulullah tells him, sell the shield and whatever you get from that, that is the mahra of Sayyidah Zahra salam, the mahra of the best of women. Keep the sword, you need it in the battlefield. But Imam Ali got married to Sayyidah Fatima, they established the best of families, an example of family. Come to today's age, if I want to spend 20, 30k and then I say to Allah, you promised me getting rich, okay, but you did not manage your life better. If you could afford five, pay five. Why go for over? Why? Because the public wants it. What are people going to say? He got his son married for something as little as, you know, he invited 200 people. The other person invited 1,000 people. Why can't we do that? So what do we do? We take loans and credit cards and then the burden falls on our heads. 
nothing to do with Islam. Islam says, If they're poor, Allah will make them rich. This is a promise of Allah. If I ma don't manage them properly, then it is my own issue. And Imam Ali السلام, says it very beautiful. He says, الناس, If you want to please people, this is something you will never be able to achieve. Even though, let's say, people who are invited, 500, 1,000 people in their weddings, these people who come, majority of them will go out talking. They will say the groom looked like this, the bride looked like this, the food was not good, the food was... So they will complain, why do you need to spend so much to please people when they're not going to be pleased? The burden is going to come on your own shoulder. And this is something we have to change culturally. Many people are put off for marriage because of these facts. How am I going to afford a wedding? How am I going to afford a holiday? How am I going to afford a house? Rather than paying all that into a wedding, which only lasts for a few hours, let them invest it in a mortgage. First payment, 10K, 15K, 20K, which will benefit them long term rather than benefiting the community and what the community is going to say. So that's number one. Allah says, if you're worried about financially, I will take care of it. Number two, the reason why Islam, Quran, Ahlul Bayt emphasize on marriage, he says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And among his wonders, Allah says, imagine, this is something that Allah calls a wonder of his creation. He creates for you maids out of your own kind, so you might incline towards them. Sukoon, if you want peace of mind, you have your spouse for you. And if she wants peace of mind, she has you for her. And then Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً It is Allah that created this love and tenderness between you. So let's go back to normal life. I can ask myself, everyone can ask himself, the community. The Quran says, getting married is to find peace of mind. If we are not finding that peace of mind in marriage, Allah, is there something wrong in the Quran? Surely not. Quran is haq, and whatever Allah says is haq, then there must be something wrong in the way I manage my life. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he had to endure so much pain, so many challenges, that he himself says this, سَأَصْبِرُوا حَتَّى يَجْزَعَ الصَّبْرُ مِنْ صَبْرِ Imagine. He says, I will be patient until patience itself gives up on me. This is the patience of Ali ibn Abi Talib had. Yet this very man, he says, when I walk into Fatima alayhi salam, I forget all my burdens. Sukoon. This is how a marriage should be built on. That when Fatima sees Ali, she's pleased with him. When Ali sees Fatima, he's pleased with her. And I cannot say that they are maqsumeen. They are one models. Example for us, Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, she had four kids in a row, Hassan, Hussain, Zainab, Um Kalthum, and then she had a miscarriage as well of Muhsin. Did she ever complain? No. Because she found it peaceful with Ali ibn Abi Talib. How can I manage my life? Again, let's take Ali ibn Abi Talib or even the Prophet as an example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would help Khadija in house chores. We find this in the books. He would not say she's a woman, she would take care of the house. This is something we have in communities. In many cultures, oh, it's a woman job. It's not mine. I'm a man, she will deal with it. She will deal with the kids, she will deal with the cooking, cleaning. It's her job. And then on top of that, she has to take care of me as well. This is how the community is. If I have that mentality, sukoon might be very far away from me. But if I follow Ali ibn Abi Talib, this is the, the words of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, once Rasulullah walks in into my house, what does he find me doing? Unaqil adas. This is the word. Imagine Ali ibn Abi Talib was, you know, have you ever seen like women when they try to take the bad lentils from the good ones? Ali ibn Abi Talib was doing that job. He's married. Why didn't he ask Fatima? This is you. I'm Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam al Muttaqeen. I have other jobs to do. 
unless my schedule is more busier than Ali ibn Abi Talib, then yes. But the man who was worshipping Allah throughout the night, helping people throughout the day, he had time for his wife and his kids, and helping him at house as well. Another narration says that Ali ibn Abi Talib, yaknus al-dar, yaknus, sweeping the house. Let's say the hoovering of today, you know, we, we call it hoover. So <laughs> Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib used to sweep the house for Fatima. Why did he not stop? Hang on a minute, Fatima is the woman, she should do it. Hassan Hussein, he used to give them time. No, they have a mother. She is Sayyidat Misal Alameen, she can take care of them. Rather, he's setting an example for people. If you want sukoon in your life, if you want this ayah to apply in your life, then you should sit down with yourself, divide the roles. When Fatima alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him how much work she has at home, she came with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Rasulullah sat both of them down as a father-in-law. He divided the house chores between Ali and Fatima. Why can't we do this? Why do we throw everything on one shoulder and then we complain, oh, she doesn't give me time. How is she going to give you time when she has no time for herself? Something that I should think of. I do not give her that time and then I complain that she's not giving me time. Allah says, second, mawadda wa rahma. At least I should have that feeling for her. You know, she's running day and night and sometimes we say that, what do you have to do? I have to work. But forgetting the fact that house Taking care of a house is a job, full-time job. Especially if she has kids and they are uh, at a very young age. It's not easy waking up the nights, then during the day or sending them to school, when they come back from school, the homework. All this the man has to keep in mind before he points the fingers at his wife that I'm not really happy. Or she says, I'm not happy with him. They have to sit down together. He writes down his shortcomings, she writes down her shortcomings. Let's sort them out. Second, Allah says second. So it's clearly something is not wrong with the Quran. It is something wrong with me managing my own life. The third ayah in the Quran, referring to this, which we will elaborate a bit more, inshallah, where Allah says, Something that I should remind myself and the community should remind themselves of this ayah, especially those who are married. Allah says, they are garments for you and you are garments for them. Why did Allah use the word libas? You are their spouses, they are your spouses. Why libas? The ulama divided into four different meanings. There could be many other meanings. Libas is the closest you have to your body. Libas in itself, libas clothing, is the closest you have to your body. So if you need to compromise, sometimes you have to compromise, compromise in marriages for marriages to work, especially at the beginning of them, five years, 10 years, 15 years, you have to compromise. If she has to compromise, you have to compromise. So you should think there is no fault if I was to compromise for my wife because she is the closest to me. If you look at the Quran, Allah doesn't use the parents as an example libas. Allah doesn't use your siblings as libas. He doesn't use your kids as libas. This relation, Allah says, she is your clothing and you are her clothing. So if you were to compromise in the right places, not you know, compromising in something that's haram, no, that's not acceptable. Or something that goes against the way of Allah, a man should not compromise and likewise a woman should not compromise too. But things that, for example, now, we have, especially in the youth, I'm not sure about the elder generation, if you go out, I have to go out. So one by one. If you go on a holiday, I have to go on a holiday. If I take care of the kids, you have to take care of the kids. Marriage in itself is not competing. Allah says, I've created you to complete one another, not to compete against one another. Sometimes she's down, you pick her up. Sometimes you're down, she picks you up. That's how the Quran shares. If you want sukoon, if you want financial stability, you have to manage things together. And communication is the biggest key. Wherever you go, communication is always the best key. If you go in businesses, they will tell you communication. If you go in school, colleges, universities, communication. Even if you are in trouble, they tell, always tell you financially, 
keep in touch with us. Tell us what you are up to. Communication. When it comes to marriage, same thing. Communication. Sit down. Listen from her. Tell her what you have. Sort things out. This is how it will only work out. So number one is uh, there's no harm in compromising as long as it doesn't go against the will of Allah. Number two, what does the calm garment do? It conceals the shortcomings. If I have something on my body, the garment covers it. Allah says, likewise, you should cover her shortcomings and she should do the same for you. Rather than sharing it with the community, sharing it with the family, even parents. Even parents, Quran forbids that. If you have a problem, you have a shortcoming, she should share it with you, you share it with her. Or you conceal it from the public. Even parents or siblings or very close friends. People sometimes, they think that I have to let something go. No, don't. Sometimes you have to keep a secret. And one of the ulama says this, uh, I'm not sure if it's a narration or a statement. He says that the word is your prisoner. The moment you speak out, you become the prisoner of the word. So you have to be very careful. If you say something, that's it. Now you have to either wait until people forget that, or you will be the prisoner of this word that you said until the end of your life. So control yourself, keep it as a secret. It will stay a prisoner of yours. So number two, concealing. Number three, the garment in itself, what does it do? It is an ornament, zina. So your wife is zina for you, and you are zina for her, ornament. Especially if someone is aqil, someone is wise, she is wise. These things work out together really well. And this is what we should work towards. No one is going to get someone who is like them 100%. If you get someone like you 50%, 40%, you should be thankful. We can work on the other part, which is how much ever is missing. We can work together. You don't have to be the same. Marriage is about ups and downs, but how you control them. And number four, what does the garment do? It protects you from heat and cold. So whenever she is not feeling well, you are there for her and vice versa. This is how people can, especially the couple, for example, they can build a, a, a relationship out of harmony and love. If we were to follow the Quran, we would find that 100% of our problems would be solved. 100% of the problems. When Rasulullah says that I'm leaving Quran and Ahlul Bayt with you, if you were to stay with them, stick to them, you will never be misguided. Misguided not just religiously, in your own life you'll find peace of mind. When you find, for example, Ahlul Bayt had problem, had they not been, been given problems from people, they had the best of life because they managed it well. Rasulullah had bad wives, he managed it well. Imam Hassan had a bad wife, he managed it well. Imam Muhammad Taqi Jawad had a bad wife, they managed it well. So likewise, some women, they have bad husbands, they manage it well. Asya alayhi is one of them that Allah mentions in the Quran. She had to be with the worst man at that time, yet she managed it well. So now when it comes to libas, there's another, another ayah that Allah speaks about which forms two types of clothing, not just the materialistic, rather the spiritual one, and that is what everyone should focus on. When people get married, they should not think that I'm just there to keep myself away from haram. Rather, I can elevate spirit spiritually. The ayah in the Quran says, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسَ يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ Allah says, we have brought down or we have taught you how to wear garments which will cover your shortcomings. And then he says, and the clothing of piety is better. So Allah speaking about the materialistic clothing that we wear and then he's speaking of the taqwa, the God consciousness which is Better. Now, keeping in mind the ayah that we spoke about, garments spiritually and garments that are materialistic. Now, just a note on the side how Allah focuses on this in the Quran. 
Whenever he speaks of something materialistic, he joins spirituality from that. For example, another ayah in the Quran, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِرُهُمْ Allah says to the Prophet, take money of their, uh, take sadaqah from their money that will purify them. How, how does that make sense? That if you were to take sadaqah from them, that would purify them. If I have najasa on my hand, if I was to give sadaqah, would that najasa go away? wouldn't go away. I have to wash it off. So the tahara is spiritual, but the giving is materialistic. This is one ayah. The other one, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah in itself, you have to offer it physically. But what does it do? It elevates you spiritually. The third example in the Quran, Allah says, for siyam. Siyam, you have to bear, you have to be patient physically. But how does it benefit you? Taqwa, spiritually. When you go to the house of Allah, the fourth uh, option, the fourth uh, option is when you go to the house of Allah, what do you do? You are doing tawaf of Kaaba, which is bricks. But Allah says, Fihi manafi'ul linnas. That there is benefits for people in going to the house of Allah, be it financially, be it spiritually. So it is maddi physically, but I gain spiritual benefit. When you slaughter something for the sake of Allah, for example, a cow, a sheep, or a lamb, Allah says, Inna Allah la yanalu luhumahuma wala shuhumahuma wala ki yanaluhu taqwa minkum. When you sacrifice, Allah says, I don't take the fat or the meat. Rather, you benefit from the spirituality of the act that you slaughtered in the way of Allah. So materialistic to you, spiritual so now when we speak of marriage itself if i was to follow the guidelines of the quran if i was to follow rasulullah as an example imam ali السلام, as an example then marriage should elevate me spiritually the limit should not be just okay for me to keep away from haram no rather i should have a higher aim that if i was to get married with the help of my spouse, we will get closer to Allah. This is the aim. But how should that happen now? Especially this is for the parents. Now, mashallah, from what I can see, I'm assuming everyone should be married now. But the advice of people who want to get married is, for example, you know, when you sit down with the spouse-to-be, normally what do they ask for? You know, when we sit down, well, probably you can record some of the questions you had when you sat with your spouse. They say, what do you like? For example, what color do you like? Okay, I like green. I like green. Oh, we have something in common now. What do you like to eat? I like to eat this. Oh, this is your favorite? Okay, I don't know if I can make it. I, I can learn it for you. So the things they talk about, they don't really play a big part in marriage itself. They don't. You know, Knowing the color of what your wife likes or what the color you like, it's not going to really help in your marriage. The understanding of what she cooks, what she doesn't cook, it's not really going to help you. The destinations you want to fly to, it's not going to help. Rather, we should focus on where do you see yourself in five years? You understand their goals now. The goals that she has or the goal that the man has, do they go alike? Do you think yourself that you can live with a person who has that goal? Do you have the same goals? If not, that means very likely the marriage is going to be problematic because she has different views of life to what you have. If someone says, for example, now many youth are having this issue, I want to study in the Hausa, be it Qum or Najaf. I want to go there five years. He has just gotten married now. His wife says, I don't want to go there. She was born and bred in this country. She says, I cannot live there for five years. What's going to happen then? Why did you not discuss this when you sat down with her? I have a plan to do one, two, and three. Would you be okay with that? If she says no, then that's it. Off you go. Not when marriages take place, you think, I should have done this, I should have done that. These things that matter, we should discuss. This is what we should teach our children. When you sit down as parents, we should tell them, what should you look for in a spouse? It is not enough that I just look at his, for example, he's got a degree, he's a doctor, or he's studying uh, in one of the well-established universities, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. That means he ticks all the boxes. Imam al-Hassan was approached by someone, and 
that man says to the Imam, I want to get my daughter married. Who do you advise me to get her married to? And this is Imam al Hassan. <coughs> the Imam tells him, tells him, get her married to someone who is a muttaqi. Why? For two reasons. If he was to love her, he would treat her really well. If he was to not love her, or if things don't work out together, for the sake of Allah, he will respect her. That's a muttaqi. Now, do we really look for that in a man when he comes into our houses or when we get married to a woman? Do we really look for taqwa? Or rather, do we focus on what family is she from or what family is he from? Sayyid or non Sayyid? Degree, doctor, non doctor. We focus on things which is secondary. Yes, they are all important, but they are not the foundation of marriage. Remember, Ali ibn Abi Talib had nothing. Yet, look at him, he established the best of families with Sayyidah Fatima Why? Because they were compatible. Is she compatible? Is he compatible? This is something that our generation has to understand. Or else this, whatever Allah says in the Quran, the peace of mind, the financial stability won't be there if from the beginning I don't dig these things up. We have to be open about them. What do you, okay, how many kids do you want? How do you raise your kids? What's your priority? What do you want your kids to be? They would say everything out. See, does that match with your a, what you are looking for? Fair enough. If it doesn't, it's not good for you. No matter how handsome or beautiful your spouse to be is, it's not going to help. When people fall into arguments, they don't care about these things anymore. When marriages are falling, people don't care about the things that they really cared about when they were engaged. What really matters is how they think. When it comes to arguing, how, how do they think? My teacher would say always the disadvantages of not working things out together between the two, who really carries the burden of that? Children. Children. As they grow up, he says, one example he gave us, he said, for example, when the parents argue, they argue in front of the kids. So now the kid is growing up, he sees that my parents are arguing. But when they saw the problem out, they saw the problem behind closed doors. So the kid is not watching that the problem has been sorted. Then, after a while, another problem arises. Then another problem arises. He says, as he is growing up, or as she is growing up, they are taking a bad image of marriage. When he or she will get married, they will treat their spouse just like the parents were treating one another. Because they have no idea how marriage should be. But when they see that, no, there's understanding, there's love between our parents, then they have self-confidence as they grow up. Then they will have an idea, how should I treat my spouse? This is how a community is formed. If the house in itself, imagine we are like 20 people here, each one of us has family. This family is a five people. So we are a hundred already. This is a community in itself. If I was to work on my family, you were to work on your family, we have formed a very well-educated family that will raise a better generation. But if we don't focus on these things, our aim is different, then this is where the community falls. It doesn't take it one or two years, it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Before you know it, in 50 years, you'll have a generation different than the one we've had before. And this is what we're living now. If you were to look at the youth of today, they have this problem. Divorce rates are at a very high rate compared to before. Anything happens, that's it. He's not good for me, she's not good for me. Divorce. Rather than how people used to sort it before. And this is someone who they asked a wise person, why is it that the divorce rates are higher than before? In fact, before they have considered it as a taboo to get divorced. Why is it now so easily done? He says, before when things used to break up, people would fix them. Now people throw them away. That's why. First problem, second problem, she's not good for me. Why? Try to solve these problems out. And like I said, the ayah, Allah says that they are the closest to you. What does that mean? When you have an issue with them, try to solve it between you two. Even parents shouldn't be involved. Why? Not just parents or any family members. Some people have agendas. 
Let's be honest, you know, some people don't really like marriages to work out either out of jealousy, out of hate, out of any reason that they have. They don't want this marriage to work out. They will take one side and they will give them information and information and information to provoke them against their spouse. That will end up, that will end up in divorce. Had they done it themselves, it wouldn't have happened. They would have ended up in divorce. They would have sorted out. Why? Because Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً There is tenderness and love between you. Sort it out. Don't bring another third party in to solve your problems out. Yes, after one, two, three thing, times, four times, it's not working out. Bring someone who is wise, who you know will do it for the good of both. Not that someone will take one side or the other side. Once sides are taken, it becomes a war. Who is going to win? He's going to win, she's going to win. We're not at war here. Let's sort these problems out together. And I finish with this example from the Quran of Banu Israel. Banu Israel, when Allah told them to slaughter a cow, had they slaughtered the cow, it would have been a job done and dusted. But what did they do? They made it complicated for their own selves. Allah didn't make it complicated. They made it complicated. How? They asked Musa, ask your Lord, how old should the cow be? Middle-aged, uh, old, young, he says to them. It should be middle-aged. What color should, should she be? Make, um, tell Allah to make it plain for us so we understand which one. The Imams السلام, say, Sa'abuha fa sa'abaha Allahu alayhi. They made it difficult, so Allah made it difficult on them to find the cow. Had they listened to Allah from the beginning, pick any cow and slaughter it. Likewise with marriages now, we are making it difficult. The more difficult we make it, it becomes difficult on us. And then our children will indulge in haram, be it something we are aware of or behind us, behind the closed doors, you don't know. You can't really follow an adult wherever they go. Especially now with the phone, with the social media, they may tell you, you know, I'm going for work, I'm going with friends. You don't know what they're doing, what they're talking about. If you make it difficult, things will make, be difficult for you. If someone comes, you know that he's good, he's a, his akhlaq are good, but just because he is not a Sayyid, no, I can't really give that, you know, the community doesn't allow it. Just because he is not a doctor, no, he's good, but he's not good for my doctor. Okay, the more difficult you make it, the more difficult it becomes. And especially now, men have become like this. I wanted to have a degree, she has to be uh, of this beauty, she has to be from this family, she has to be ready for to have two, three kids, she has to be cooking. Where, where do you find this? This is something that is made after, not before you tick, tick, tick. Quran tells you, al tells you, does he have taqwa, does she have taqwa? That's the box that you have to take. Move on. Materialistic things, they are secondary. In fact, you can build them together. How many people build their life together rather than just an individual coming and building the life itself? When two of them are building it together, they appreciate what they have gone through. The marriages become strong. But if she comes to a ready place or he comes to something ready, yes, after one, two times, this is not for me, then move on. This is what destroys the community. And this is what Ahlul Bayt Ali Salam refrained from and the Quran wants us to refrain from. Don't make it difficult for yourself. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar fa salli li rabbika wa anhar inna shani'aka huwa al-abhar. Allah. 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 All